If you are 25 and are not a liberal, you have no heart. If you are 35 and are not a conservative, you have no brain. Hello, my name is Clinton and welcome to Politics for Beginners. Today we are discussing what it means to be left-wing and right-wing. In terms of basic language, they are important to understand. First, a little bit of background. The whole idea of left-wing and right-wing actually comes from the French. Back in one of their many revolutions, I will have to admit, <laughs> the French history is very complicated. There has been countless revolutions and rewriting of the Constitution, and even for someone like myself who likes to follow this stuff, I lose track. However, from a basic level, we can say that the left-wingers sat on the left side of Parliament, and the right-wingers sat on the right side of Parliament. Yes, it is really that simple. One group sat here, the other group sat here. This reminds me of, honestly, the high school cafeteria, where we had one click here and one click there, and they never shall intertwine. Because how dare you try and sit at my table? So that's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. Whatever. You can't sit with us! Right? Gotta get that mean girl's energy. But what does it mean to be a left-wing? And what does it mean to be a right-wing? A left-wing person is more likely to share, more likely to want to see all people get along and live in harmony, where a right-wing person, and I don't love this analogy, but I'm going to use it anyway, is a little bit more selfish. And I'll put that in quotes because the word selfish is has a negative connotation, but it really does mean that they actually care about themselves and want to put themselves forward. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, even though the word selfish can kind of come across as quite strong. So where a left-wing person wants to share and wants to maximize the prosperity for everybody, a traditionally right-wing person is kind of just focused on themselves. They want to be independent, as the expression goes. There's a great line from President Bill Clinton that sums up the right-wing persuasion pretty well. The quote is, That every politician wants every voter to believe he was born in a log cabin he built himself. <laughs> but it ain't so. You see, we believe that we're all in this together is a far better philosophy than you're on your own. So to paraphrase that last line, from the left-wing perspective, we are all in this together. From the right-wing perspective, government, leave me alone. I don't really like to use the directions because I find it confusing. I think what is more appropriate language is the idea of saying progressives and conservatives. And to understand what a progressive and what a conservative is, it really comes down to understanding the status quo. The status quo is essentially how things have been done. I will use the example of the telephone and moving into the, our world of texting. For the longest time, ever since Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, it was the primary technology used to communicate. This existed all the way up until the late 20th century when the instant message was invented. It came to dominate the landscape and how we communicate today primarily is through texting. However, you will find that some old school people, and I would probably put myself in this camp, still prefer a phone call. We like the old ways. We value history and tradition and think that if you actually want to have a conversation with somebody, pick up the phone and call me. If you were to ask my girlfriend, who is much more hip and wise, she would say that texting is her primary method of communication. So using this example of people who prefer phone calls versus people who prefer texting, is an analogy that I'm trying to put forward to understand conservatives and progressives. A conservative will always look to maintain the traditions and history of the past. 
it actually comes from the word conservation. We can think of this from an ecological standpoint. Those environmentalists that want to conserve wilderness and actually leave it in its natural state, these geographical areas are called conservation sites. And it comes from the idea of to conserve. So a conservative wants to maintain things as they were. They like the status quo. And they don't want things to change. On the other side, we have progressives, people who want to push society forward. They challenge the status quo. They ask the question, just because it's been done like that for ages doesn't mean it should be done like that forever. To tie this up in a nice bow for you guys, if we think of this in terms of a graph, we would have the left wing and right wing on the X axis, and we would have democracy and authoritarian on the Y axis. The economics of it all are understood to be on the X axis. Are you left wing, higher distribution of wealth, or are you right wing, more keeping the resources that you have? Or are you closer to zero, meaning being in the center? Arguments on the vertical or Y axis are questions around democracy and dictatorships. And this is a little bit of a callback from our conversation about democracy last week. But if we remember, democratic governments want to ask the people for their input. They like freedom of association, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and they want to give people the opportunity to flourish and live their own lives. That's a very democratic concept where on the other side, authoritarians, dictators, they do not want to allow people this freedom of choice. A lot of the time, right-wing governments get lumped into this dictator or authoritarian approach. And if I was to create a boogeyman here, I would have to call out the Republican Party of the United States. That is a very right-wing economics party but also holds strong Christian moral views. I'm not going to get into morality here. That's really not my purpose on the YouTube channel. But I think if I'm speaking honestly and I'm speaking in plain language to you guys, the Republican Party does look to restrict freedoms for people who are outside of the Christian faith. Because of this, there is an impression that right-wingers are authoritarian. I want to dispel that. Freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of the press, all of these lovely democratic concepts exist on both the right and the left. But again, I really think in the main purpose of this video is to kind of throw out the whole left and right because I don't really like it. Again, are we talking about directions? Are we talking about political parties? Can you be left wing but stand on the right side of the room? And all this, it is much easier to understand progressives and conservatives are dependent on different issues. So the idea that left-wing people think this and right-wing people think this, personally, I find that counterintuitive. It's really on a policy-by-policy -policy basis, you are either wanting to change the status quo or you're wanting to keep traditions in place. I hope that defines progressive and conservative. I hope you guys have some more language to talk about and understand politics, because that's the whole point of this show. So I will leave it there. Thank you for listening to this ramble, and I will see you guys in the next episode.